So tonight, there is, in fact, a 20-man over-the-top rope battle royal. And two of those 20 men are Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant. And Hogan does a quick promo. It's an over-the-top rope battle royal. That means he has no friends tonight. And his main objective is to get even with Andre the Giant. He is focused on Andre's 7-foot-5, 500-pound, big, nasty body. And then Gene is there with Bobby Heenan and Andre the Giant. And in about 10 seconds, Heenan just says, I'm sure Hogan will have his eyes on Andre, but Andre will have his eyes and his hands on Hulk Hogan. And Andre holds his big, giant hand over me and Gene's face. We are at the Joe Louis Arena in Detroit, the same city that would host WrestleMania 3 two weeks later, although that was never said. Mean Gene does an interview with the Hulkster. Question is, why are you entering this battle royal? Why don't you wait for a one-on-one -on -one confrontation with Andre the Giant? Yeah, he doesn't say, why don't you wait until WrestleMania 3? No. He says, why don't you wait for a one-on-one -on -one confrontation? I was like, dude, we're fucking... We're, we're right around the corner. 15 days. Well, I didn't know at the time. That's <laughs> I why see. I was questioning the date of Got WrestleMania. It. I was like, WrestleMania is always the last week of March or the first week of April. Yes. One time it was like the second week of April because of something or other, but that's when WrestleMania is. How the fuck have they not made this match official yet? So I will, I will reveal to everybody what actually happened, okay? All right. They showed footage of Andre ripping Hogan's shirt off and his cross. That's what Hogan is so angry about. It happened on Piper's Pit. And what actually happened, which they didn't show us, is Piper's Pit began with Andre demanding the championship match at WrestleMania 3. That's when they shot the angle for WrestleMania 3. So he rips off the shirt, he rips off the cross... So the match has already been made, but like for whatever reason, it's a it's fucking top secret if you're watching this show on NBC. But if you're if you're a WWF fan, if you've been watching the syndicated shows or whatever, you know about the match. But for your casual Saturday Night Live viewer, it's a fucking mystery. There was a whole series of Piper's Pit segments leading to this, none of which were shown here except for the final one where Andre yanks the cross off. Yes, but there's a whole thing where like. Hogan is presented a special belt on being such a great world champion. And then Andre is presented with the undefeated belt, which uh, uh, just for being undefeated for so long. But then Hogan interrupts his ceremony to take a spotlight. And there's a thing there where... Hogan did that a lot, by the way. I'm sure he did. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure he did. Uh, and then, like, Piper announced he had Hogan and Andre coming out at the same time. But unbeknownst to either Hogan or Piper, Andre came out with Heenan and just broke... There's a fantastic Hogan promo where he's just pleading with his friend Andre you can't be out here with him I think that's the one that leads to actually the cross being torn off and all that but uh, and, and and then the week after Hogan comes back and and he's heartbroken and Piper presses the question of will, will will you accept this challenge will you face this man and Hogan like I don't know if he do I forget if he dodges the question or whatever but it, it, finally he just accepts and he just roars yes and the building's going crazy and everyone went off to go contact the local pay-per-view or cable operator to get the, this new pay-per-view event thing. So yes. There is a whole long series of awesome Piper's Pit segments that built Hogan and Andre none of which We saw nothing except the cross being pulled off. So Hogan here, Gene's question to get back to this. Why don't you wait for a one-on-one -on -one confrontation with Andre the Giant? Hogan says, I know some people have been asking that question. Those people aren't real Hulkamaniacs. Real Hulkamaniacs know I like living in the danger zone. I don't care if there are 450 men out there. I would still have eyes on Andre the Giant. And he hopes, his, he, hopes he gets his hands on Andre and anyone else in the Heenan family. Would have been better. <laughs> Hogan is prepping up for the, for the uh, Battle Royal. He's got one of those arm flexi deals, the flexi bars. And he keeps rattling, rattling off heels' names in the Battle Royal, and every other one is Andre. It's like, Orndorf, Andre, Hercules, Andre, Volkov, Andre, Andre, Andre. Okay, I'm going to read you the graphic that was on the screen, and then tell you how long it was on screen for. This is the list of names who are in the 20-man Battle Royal, uh. and I will, I will spare you the math. I'd counted. There are, in fact, 20. All right, good. Hillbilly Jim, 
Outlaw Ron Bass. Dude, that's as far as you can get before they took it off the screen. It was three seconds. I counted. It was exactly. <laughs> yes. There's there there's twenty names, maybe more, because some like some say the tag team name and them both guys. It's all on screen for three seconds, and they cover it up with a twenty man battle royal graphic. Dude, the funniest part is Vince. I've never heard Vince McMahon talk faster. <laughs> he starts to rattle off every single one of the twenty names, and he gets about five in and gives up. I laughed so hard. This is his fucking show. Yes, it's he's taped. <laughs> Dude. You could have redone this really easily. The 20 men are Hillbilly Jim, Outlaw Ron Bass, Sika, The Islanders, Haku and Tama, Leaping Lanny Poffo, Hercules, The Natural Butchered, Paul Orndorff, Billy Jack Haynes, Coco Beware, Nikolai Volkov, Black Jack Mulligan, yes, two words, the Demolition, Axe and Smash, Honky Tonk Man, The Killer Bees, Jumping Jim Brunzel and B. Brian Blair, and Saving the Best for Last, Andre the Giant and Hulk Hogan. So as guys are coming to the ring, they're all, they're all coming out. Each guy got a, each guy or team got their own entrance. Only Hulk Hogan got music at the very end. So Gene interviews Heenan and Andre. He accuses Heenan of being an insurance policy. Heenan I was almost at him. positive that Andre was a wax statue in this interview until he actually said words at the end. He, 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 listen, Heenan is his mouthpiece. He pays Bobby Heenan to speak for him. He doesn't have to, to talk it as well. That'd be ridiculous. Heenan denies being an insurance policy. He can't wait to watch Andre throw Hogan out. Hogan tried to hide from this man for three years. He'll try to hide again tonight, but Andre will get his hands on him. And finally, Andre just says, Hogan, I want you. That was the worst that Andre was the Giant. That was fucking horrible. Actual Andre could do that now. He's been dead for a long time. Okay, so here's here's some notes on Andre the Giant, all right? There is a lot of mythology around WrestleMania 3. I don't know if you're aware or not. I've heard some of these there's, stats and figures may have been exaggerated. There's a lot of bullshit, okay? And one of the stories in a lot of these goofy wrestling documentaries is that Andre could barely move his back was destroyed they weren't sure that he was going to make it to the ring he was practically on his deathbed he did the mania match because he was about to die this is all bullshit okay it's funny it's such bullshit that like whenever i saw a documentary talk about him being on his deathbed or about to die it's like fuck it's not that hard to find out when he died like, it was not 1988. It wasn't June, no. He fucking was wrestling for years afterwards, okay? Now, the truth is, he did in fact have a bad back. But, but, everybody that tells a story about how they weren't sure that he was going to show up for WrestleMania and he was so... It's like, the Saturday Night's main event was two weeks earlier and he did a fucking battle royal. And it wasn't like he was, you know, ricochet, but he moved fine. I can confirm he was not Ricochet. No, not great, but he moved fine. Now. He was not Iron Sheik in the gimmick battle royal either. Thi no, he was way better than that. Now, this this is, I could not believe this, but it is in fact true. So, he wrestled at WrestleMania 2. Yes. Which was a year earlier. Also a battle royal. And then he took time off to film The Princess Bride. So, when that was done, he came back, and for some fucking reason... He was, he was one of the machines. Exactly, yes. He was a giant machine. And he did this for a few months. And then he disappeared in August. Then later, they started to shoot the angles on Piper's Pit. So I, I could not even believe this. But this Battle Royal was the first time that he had been in the ring since August. August, mm -hmm. no house shows, nothing. And he got in there and, I mean, he made it. He made it through the Battle Royal. Yeah. There wasn't without, a whole shit issue. ton of stuff to do, but like he made it and he got eliminated and he got backstage and he was sweating a little bit, but he cut his promo and dude, that guy was ready to go for Mania. He wasn't like in no, perfect yes, yes. shape, 
Like, his back was hurting him, but it wasn't hurting him so bad that it was like his final match or anything like that. Like, they've still got Mania 4, him and Hogan in the tournament, they got that big main event that does 33 million viewers. He fucking ends up feuding with the Ultimate Warrior, for fuck's sake. Yes, he, like, he teams with Haku and feuds with Demolition. He's around for a long time. Yes. But, yeah, this was his first match in the ring since August. Mm-hmm. That's nuts. All right, so it's finally time for the Battle Royal. Now, I think I've said this a hundred times, most Battle Royals suck. Jesse, make sure to notice note that he hates Battle Royals. Yeah. <laughs> because sure he's he a does. man who always tells the fucking truth on commentary. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. There's a handful of Battle Royals that are any good. This one was a great Battle Royal. Because everything that happened, happened for a reason. There were stories that unfolded. There were chapters... That followed one after another. There were things that were set up. There were things that were paid off. Everything happened for a reason. So Hogan's the last man in. And this is peak Hulkamania. He's been champion now for coming up on two years. Uh, obviously undefeated in that time. And this, the king of the world is the only guy who gets music. And he's there to get revenge on the unbeatable Andre the Giant. And he's the last guy in the ring. And he gets down to ringside and... Before he can get in the ring, Andre is standing in front of him to block his entrance. Everyone else, the other 18 dudes, are circled around them in awe. This is not our fight. We're not involved. We're just let these two hash it out. Finally, Andre backs off, invites Hogan into the ring, because, of course, Andre wants Hogan, too. So Hogan steps in, and they go to a wide shot. And there's the, the ring is cut neatly in half. In one half of the ring is Hulk Hogan by himself. The other half of the ring is Andre the Giant in front and 18 guys behind him. And everyone's standing back and watching. And this is it, man. This is going to be it. They're going to go. And then right before it can happen, the rest of the Heenan family and that dirty bastard Honky Tonk Man, they jump Hogan and cut him off before they can even touch. So for the next... Seven, eight minutes, however long it goes. The thing about Battle Royals is, usually the first part is either so fast, you wonder why they even wasted anyone's time doing this, or it's so slow that it's boring. This one was paced perfectly in that every minute or so, Hogan and Andre would take turns throwing guys out. So there's always something going on, and because it was always those two... You could always focus on one or the other of them, and you would see the important stuff going on. So Hogan dumps dumps Honky. Andre dumps Sika, and then Haku. They're taking turns, throwing guys out. Andre, in the middle of this, he grabs Lanny Poffo. He hits one headbutt. He throws him out of the ring. Lanny is a bloody mess from a headbutt. Well, they said it was from a headbutt, but he was bleeding all over the place before Andre headbutted him. I Even think better. he just gigged early. I think he gave. I think he, he was gigged bleeding all over, and then because and there's definitely a point. They were prepared to come out with a stretcher and carry Lanny Poffo backstage. Getting oh, yeah, I'm Andre sure. the. I'm positive he gigged. I, I'm yes. positive he gigged. Yes. Right? he gigged yes. early before the. Yes, headbutt. I'm sure he did too. But he did a lot, and they, they got onto the Giants' head butt over as a killer move. So the pattern continues. Hogan dumps Bass. Andre dumps Mulligan. Hogan dumps Nikolai. Andre dumps Blair. Finally. Hercules and Paul Orndorff, the other two Heenan family flunkies, they're working over Hogan in the corner. They do a double team whip, and they whip him across the ring, and Hogan crashes into Andre. And either guy goes down. Everyone stops to watch them square off again. And Hogan hits like two punches, and Orndorff cuts Hogan off immediately. Hogan's a house of fire. He throws Orndorff out, but now Hogan's distracted. Andre grabs him from behind. Andre delivers the killer giant headbutt that just about ended the career of Lanny Poffo two minutes ago. He tosses Hogan out of the ring and gets in this exact gesture of disdain as if he's tired of sullying his hands with his filthy Hulk Hogan. The best was he throws him out and, and Vince is doing commentary and Vince just explains it. He threw him out like he was a piece of trash. It's exactly like that. That's- I thought that's what Vince told Andre. When you throw him out, yes. I want you to act like you just threw out a piece of trash. Yes. The, 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 Vince had very ex- extreme strengths and weaknesses as an announcer. 
The weaknesses, as you noted, he was incredibly biased and lied to the viewer, but his strengths were so strong. <laughs> he got this piece of I thought that Vince over. was largely a very, very good announcer. On the whole. He was not like the greatest announcer in wrestling history, but his biggest strength was he wrote everything. And so he explained everything to the viewer at home. It, the funny thing is, like, he does the same shit today, but he's just sitting there constantly telling everybody else what to say. Like, he should have just been the announcer after the Mc, Mr. McMahon character was over. He should just be fucking out there right now doing the announcing. Everything would be a lot better if he did that. So this elimination of Hulk Hogan is the most important part of this bout of Royal. So we get a slow motion replay of the whole th the, show, uh, the whole thing, the showdown, Orndorff getting in involved, the headbutt, the elimination, and the piece of trash hand gesture. Hogan is irate, but he has been eliminated. The referees pull him to the back as we go to the break. When we come back, Andre is still taunting Hogan from the ring, pointing and laughing at him. Every once in a while, like Coco will come up and grab him from behind. Andre will throw him down and get back to to, to pointing at Hulk, and finally. A gang of guys. I think they claimed eight guys. Just all grabbed Andre. A gaggle. And and got together and not so much threw him, but pushed him over the top rope and out of the ring. One of these men, by the way, Hercules. Now, I don't know if they had a plan. Maybe we'll get back to this in a year or two. But the Heenan family member, Hercules, did help eliminate Andre. So now Hogan's gone and Andre's gone. And it's like a light bulb goes off. Everyone, re everyone in the ring realizes, hey, I have a chance now. And they start going to town. Hercules throws Tama out. Jim throws out Demolition Axe. Smash throws out Hibbley Jim. Coco Beware drop kicks Butch Reed out. And we are given a final four of Hercules, Smash, Billy Jack Haynes, and Coco. Quick side note. I'm pretty sure this smash was Barry Darso. There was... Yes. Another smash, one of the Moondogs who did not Rand, work out. Randy Colley was yes. the first Moondog. He was there January, February, or something like that, but... He was replaced. Yes, this is. I'm pretty sure this is Barry Darso just starting to grow his hair out after being a bald Russian for many years. So there's four dudes left, and again, they work their asses off in this fight. Coco doesn't last long. Hercules dumps him quickly. Now Billy Jack Haynes is left alone with, with two heels, Smash and Hercules. Hercules puts together a cunning plan. It goes awry, and Billy Jack knocks Smash out of the ring. So we're left with Hercules and Billy Jack, which would in fact be a WrestleMania 3 match two weeks later. They're brawling. It's just, th this is a Haas brawl. It was not as good as Karrion Cross and uh, uh, Bronson Reed on NXT, but it's two big scary mofos wailing on each other. And then Bobby Heenan jumps in the apron. He distracts Billy Jack. Billy Jack turns his back. Hercules dumps him from behind and wins. I love this Battle Royal. This Battle Royal ruled. It was a pretty good Battle Royal. The thing that amazed me was, like, this is this is, this is is your biggest match ever. Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant. All the bullshit they spew. Andre's been undefeated for 15 years. We've never been in the ring together. It's all bullshit. But, I mean, this was, this was a big time, big, big time main event. And when they got rid of, when Andre eliminated Hogan, I was like, okay. Now, Andre's just going to fucking brutalize everybody, and he's going to win this battle royal. They're going to give him the rocket push towards this Hulk Hogan match. But then, eight dudes tossed him out. Mm -hmm. So, at first I was just baffled. But then I was like, okay, so clearly, like, the idea is, well, Andre eliminated Hulk. That's more than enough. So, we'll give the rub to one of these other geeks. And I swear to God, as you were recapping this battle royal, I still fucking could not remember who won. Like, that's that's how pointless the rest of the battle royal was after they got rid of Andre. Yes, Hulk Hercules won. Mm -hmm. <laughs> who gives a shit? I assume there's probably... Uh, it was a way to build up one match on the show. And yeah. then the reality is, like, WrestleMania three at this point, two weeks in advance, was already pretty much sold out. So yeah. it's not like they needed to push Andre that much harder, but... I mean, I, I still, like, if it were my company, fuck a goofy Hercules versus Billy Jack match. Who gives a shit? I would have just had Andre destroy everybody, and he's the monster Rusimov going into this match with the Hulkster. <laughs> yes. uh, I believe the, the, the reason somebody had to win here, I believe the reason Hercules won is that after Mania, he was Hogan's challenger on the house shows. So that, that was his 
push for that. So uh, without arguing that, you know, they could have done Andre even bigger here, just have him run roughshod if the last eight guys out by himself. Uh, you know, maybe they, 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 they plan for the future as well. So anyway. Uh, Planning for the future. Jesus fuck. April. That's the future. It's just funny. They don't do shit for the future now. Well, I'm aware. <laughs> Believe me, I'm aware. So Gene interviews Andre. Now, of course, since he was eliminated, like 10 minutes have passed, so he's got a chance to get backstage and catch his breath and do this interview. What they do is they have they have Asuka beat, what was it, that Royal Rumble? Asuka beat Becky at the Royal Rumble, and then they fucking forgot about it <laughs> for six fucking months, and then they brought it back and pretended like it had been the plan the whole time. Sure. I was like, come on. So Andre gets... Uh, doesn't get a chance to speak much, but he points out it took eight wrestlers to get Andre the Giant out of the ring. It only took one giant to get Hulk Hogan out. Then Bobby Hina storms in, fresh off celebrating with Hercules. We did it, he says. Talks about how easy it was for Andre to throw Hogan out. He's been 15 years undefeated. He will remain undefeated. He will be the heavyweight champion of the world. And I mean, it's it's no secret, and the, these are not the only two examples of this. It's a formula that has been tried and true for as long as there have been combat sports. But it's very hard to watch Bobby Heenan and Andre the Giant together and not think about Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar. It's the exact same dynamic, and they're and all four are great at their jobs. 